Hello everyone, it's Justin Ryan. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Spatial Insider, where we want to show you the vision. And in today's episode, we're gonna dive deep into Vision OS to uncover some of the hidden gems in Vision OS 26. Then we'll talk about some of the latest apps to try and things to watch on Vision Pro. And then of course, there's some hot rumors out there that we need to explore as to when we're gonna get new devices for Vision OS. Please keep in mind that Vision OS 26 is currently in developer beta, but will be available later this fall as a public release. If you love Vision OS and Vision Pro, can you do me a favor and make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel? It means so much to me. Thank you so much. Let's jump into the hidden gems in Vision OS 26. The first hidden gem that I want to talk about is how the operating system handles 3D objects. Environment occlusion is for real, and it takes static real world objects and they can block any pinned widget or 3D object. The curvature of the lamp blocks that pinned photo widget and it works like magic. And as I rise up above the lamp, you can see the photo. Here's another example of this. There's a tambourine behind some real world objects on this table. And as you move around the objects, you can see the tambourine back there behind. Another thing I love is that these 3D objects are persistent. What that means is if I take the headset off and put it on later, my 3D objects will still be where I left them the next time I put my headset on. And in this example, I've got many 3D objects that you can see out there, all of the different wood blocks and white blocks and the Vision Pro and the iPhone. And those are all 3D assets. And as I place them, Vision OS understands the depth and so it occludes the object that's furthest behind. So that way, those things that are closer to me, you see just naturally, just like you do in the real world. And when you wear your headset as much as I do, you start to forget what's real and what's virtual. It's a very, very strange experience. Another cool thing about 3D objects in Vision OS 26 is that you can grab them. So in this example, I walk up to this virtual Vision Pro, I reach down, I grab it, and then you could also grab something in your other hand. So in this example, I grab that iPhone and then I go back and stand in the mirror and it kind of has this fun imagery here where you can see me holding these virtual objects, but then in the mirror, you don't see them. Being able to just reach out and grab a 3D object makes this feel so much more real. And lastly, when it comes to 3D objects, they can collide with your real world. In Vision OS, it creates a spatial tracking mesh. Your 3D objects can collide with. It can hit off the table and roll onto the floor. It can hit your couch or fall onto the floor. Now, as we're talking about 3D objects, this ties perfectly into the next hidden gem, which is WebKit. And I think what we're about to see is one of the coolest transformations to the web as we know it. And let me just show you a couple examples of what I mean. So first of all, now web developers can include 3D objects and you can take that 3D object from the browser and place it in their real space. The spatial web is going to be very exciting when all of these objects are 3D objects. And as you scroll, they just appear there kind of like a portal and you pull them out of that portal and put them in your real space. Another great thing about WebKit in Vision OS 26 is it allows you to play Apple immersive media on the web. How cool is that? And then I think web developers are gonna have a ton of fun with this because in Vision OS 26, you can create website environments. Just think about what this means for stores or any other brand if you wanna create a fully immersive experience. And I'll tell you, for those developers out there, there's a special toggle in settings that you need to flip in order to activate this setting. I shared a lot about widgets in my last episode, but I wanna share a couple updates with you on this one. When I take my headset off now, I actually miss my widgets because I get so used to them being on the wall and just looking over and being able to see the weather or how my portfolio is doing or the news. It's just really, really nice. When you take the headset off, you realize Oh yeah, all of those things, they don't actually exist in that space. And I think this goes back to some of the comments we heard a lot over the last year is like, why would someone put the headset on? Well, for me, this is one other reason as to why I enjoy wearing the Vision Pro is I can have all of these little subtle notifications, these app extensions all around my space in the places that I want them. Some other fun things to know about widgets, you can go quite a distance away from them and you could still see them. So in this example, I was at the hotel and I walked all the way down this long hallway and I looked back and sure enough, the widgets were all still there. Something else to know about widgets is you can't use them in travel mode. So unfortunately, you can't use them on a plane. And I was actually laughing about this because the same day that I tried using widgets on a plane, I saw that someone on Reddit had tried to do the same thing and came to the same conclusion. All right, another hidden gem in Vision OS 26 is that you can stream immersive scenes from your Mac to your Vision Pro. Think about the power of your Mac and what that could do for what you could see in the headset. I think that's gonna open up a lot of doors as well. 
iMessage and these new backgrounds are really, really cool in iOS 26. And I absolutely love them in Vision OS 26 because these backgrounds now have depth. I also love the little subtle feature that happens when you like a photo and it has the ripple effect. I think that's really, really cool. Another hidden gem that I found is the progressive immersion style for iOS games. So for iOS games, think iPad and iPhone games that have been reconfigured for Vision OS, you can have now this gradient effect on the sides of your app that makes you feel more grounded in your real space that gives this nice effect to the iPhone or the iPad app. I think that's pretty cool. Vision OS 26 now supports seven different types of media. Now we're getting 180 degree, 360 degree, and wide field of view video in Vision Pro. You can now see your controllers through your immersive scenes. So a lot of the Xbox controllers, the PlayStation controllers, you can see those while you're playing games now. I like this clip of the Logitech Muse and I'm really excited to get my hands on it because it does support haptic feedback and I think that's gonna be pretty awesome. Vision OS 26 Beta 2 is available for developers. That just came out this week. Lots of fixes, a lot of refinement. I did see that the mini player in Apple Music now has a search feature and I think that's great. Now we get to talk about some of the latest apps on Apple Vision Pro. This first app is called Spatial Instant Messenger and it's for all of you who would like to connect with other Vision Pro users and jump into a spatial FaceTime. I'm surprised how often I still hear from people who've had the device for over a year that will tell me, Justin, I've never actually done a spatial FaceTime because it's so magical, you've got to try it out. Add yourself to a directory, you can add buddies from the directory. And then after that, you can see who's online, who's offline. When you see people online, just send them a ping and go ahead and hop into a spatial FaceTime call with them. It's super easy. Easy to do. I've been playing with it over the last week and doing calls with other users and it's just a ton of fun. I'll make sure to put the test flight link below. Feel free to send me an invite in the app and we could be spatial FaceTime friends. All right, the next app is called Spatial Analog and it was actually featured at WWDC during the keynote. It's a really incredible tool for 3D designers. It allows you in real time to jump into an immersive scene with other users and design 3D objects and 3D scenes. It's really, really powerful. I had the opportunity to meet with their team recently. They're really, really cool. And I'm also really excited about this app because it will allow you to use the Logitech Muse when that becomes available. Spatial Analog 2 is available to download on the App Store today. This new app that I want to share with you is a game. It's called Porta Nubi, and it's from a developer in Germany that I had the pleasure of meeting several months back. He's done an incredible job in the design of this game, and it's very, very unique. I love the portal look to it. I also love how he's infused the hand control and the way that you're trying to solve puzzles. It's a freemium game. You can download it right now on the App Store. I highly recommend it. Now let's talk about a couple of test flights that aren't currently available, but I wanted to share them with you. And one is called Coffee and Sons. It allows you to put these hyper cars, these sports cars anywhere, and the detail in these cars is next level. When you put them in your space, you could actually get inside of them and you start to feel like you're actually in these cars. They're the actual scale and size of the car. And there are so many different models. I had the chance to connect with the developer and they've got some really exciting plans for this app and planning to launch this app soon. So I'll make sure to share that on all of my social platforms when it becomes available. Keep your eye on this one. It's really cool. Now this next test fly is one you've probably seen go viral online. It allows you to play with this little robot. It's called Spidey Buddy. You can either control it with a controller or there's also the option to control it by placing your finger on the desk or on the floor and it will follow your left index finger so you can place it down here go over here and then that robot starts to track it it's such a cool looking little robot it's fun to see it go across the floor and up the walls and on objects i'll make sure to let you know when it's available this next one is a fun little app it's called pomodoro ultimately you put this little cat timer on your desk and it allows you to focus on different tasks while the cat keeps the time and there are six different cats that you can choose from i also love how the cats come up on your desk there's different sound effects purring noises that they do and it's free and it's available on the app store today now let's talk about the latest things that you could watch on your vision pro the first one is a new app called epic earth we're talking Everest, national parks, Ireland, humpback whales, all with great narration created for massive screens. And I also love the immersive environment they've created to show you these movies. It's definitely worth checking out. There's a new Apple immersive video on Apple TV called F1 The Movie Hot Lap Immersive. And it's really cool because you're sitting next to Brad Pitt in the F1 car as he does a lap around the track. Not everybody can say they've sat in an F1 race car with Brad Pitt and done a lap around the track, but you can. 
Another thing to watch on your Apple Vision Pro is the talk show live from WWDC 25 with John Gruber, and this is in the theater app. And what I really like about what they've done with this is they've taken a spatial video and they've captured it with different cameras. So when you choose a different place to sit in the theater, in the virtual theater, you see the video from a different angle. I haven't seen any other app do this before, and I think it's pretty fascinating. I'm excited to see how this space evolves over the next couple of years. Let's switch gears and jump right into this exciting story that we received from Ming-Chi Kuo, who's sharing the Apple Vision and Smart Glasses lineup for the next five years. So for everyone asking, when are we gonna get a new Apple Vision Pro or a non-Pro model? He's sharing that he expects that there will be a new Vision Pro, which will be an M5 version in the third quarter here in 2025. So we're not too far off from that. He's then saying that he expects an Apple Vision Air or a non-Pro model to come available in the third quarter of 2027. He believes that it'll be 40% lighter and much more affordable. He is also sharing that he believes that in the second half of 2028 is when we will see that next iteration of the Apple Vision Pro. He says that in the second quarter of 2027, that's when we'll receive smart glasses very similar to the Meta Ray-Bans, which I actually love these a lot. And lastly, he's reporting that Apple is working on XR glasses. Think of like all of Vision OS in a pair of glasses. I don't know if all of this timeline is correct. I do believe that the vision is that XR is going to be infused with AI and to some degree these brain computer interfaces and it's going to make our tablet and our phone look very archaic. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe. I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to see the vision. With that said, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we'll see you on the next one.